Welcome to the Purpose Built Smarter Base site for the NBA. In this video, we are going to be looking at how performance staff assess practice and game loads in Smarter Base. Load management across an NBA season is very challenging, with a hectic 82 game schedule and constant travel. The big question we are trying to answer is who is flagging for high training loads, and by extension of that, how should we modify their programs? Load Monitor in the NBA has data sources for external load from Connexon for practice data and second spectrum for games. Internal load can also be measured using things like heart rate monitors such as first beat and polar or can be measured using a subjective RPE questionnaire. In order to understand load trends these data sets need to come into the same place so they can be combined to give an overall load trend and these trends can be flagged using methods such as acute chronic workload. If these data sets are combined, you can also compare the intensities are achieved in practice with what players usually face in a game. At the beginning of a practice day or game day, load monitoring can be understood in the context of performance readiness, which you can see in our readiness video. But ultimately, coaches want to go deeper, and that's where the load monitoring dashboard comes in, which you can see on your screen. As you can see, we've broken it down into a combined load monitoring practice load monitoring, game load monitoring. In the combined load monitoring, we bring together both practice and game loads for each player into the squad key load flags to highlight which players are either overtraining or undertraining. As you can see, we're using minutes from the last five games and then distance accelerations and decelerations. For minutes in the last five games, we're flagging based off the last five games compared to their season five game average and then for distance accelerations and decelerations we're just using simply acute chronic workload ratio. We've then graphed distance acute chronic workload for each of the players and we've set a threshold here looking for any players that pass that um, that we might need to pay attention to. We can, we can then drive down into an individual player summary for their combined load. So for a date period that we select, we can look at the, the particular days that they've completed during that period and the loads they achieved, as well as a visual representation of that, representing games in red and an alternative color for the practice days for each of those metrics. If we want to then drive into a particular practice session, we can then go into the practice load monitoring tab. So we can pick a particular session or a position group if we want, and then we can look at each of our key metrics. You'll see here we've got meters per minute and me mechanical load per minute added as intensity metrics. The session report for that practice session can then be laid out for each player. And for the intensity metrics, we actually can compare them to their season game average. So we can see whether today's session match the intensity of a game and we're flagging green for anything above 90% and then the colors change as the percentage drops. We can break down into drills and see the intensities and loads we did in each of the drills. We can visually represent which of the drills we got most of our load from and then again we have an individual summary showing the individual session summary and then a historical trend uh, for each of our key metrics. We can then do a very similar thing for game loads where we can select a particular game and look at a leaderboard for each of our volume and intensity metrics and then for our game report each metric is compared with their season average so we can see whether the intensities or the volume achieved in the game matched with what they've done um, and what we can flag is either if they're high above what they normally do or far below what they normally do. And then we finish off again with a individual game summary where we look at what they did each period and then we can look at a stretch of games for a date period to see the, the volume and intensity they've been doing. And for each graph we place a stretch average line so we can see what the average is for each of those metrics across that stretch of games. So what does a coach do with all of this information? Well, they can look for windows of opportunity to train to optimize performance. They can back off or reduce loads um, when they see high loads for a particular player. 
or they can make training schedule adjust, adjustments to either start later or earlier in the day or call off training if all of the players are over training. This is ultimately to be a decision support tool for coaches to manage their players load across the season. That summarizes the load monitoring workflow for the purpose-built SmarterBest site for the NBA.